a very good morning. half hour back of the hour is 8 a.m. Welcome to the Kickstarter discussion here on Morning at NTV. The discussion or topic, to be very specific, is defense reforms in the post colonial era. We are looking at the military or army ahead of a celebration of 60 years of independence that will be on the 9th of October on Sunday. We are speaking to the spokesperson of the Ministry of Defense and Veteran Affairs, Brigadier General Felix Kulaije, who we do understand that he was unable to make it here because of what is reported to be a volley of uh, meetings that have been called by President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. Of course, uh, any developments that come out of that shall be shared and, of course, uh, broadcast here on NTV. But let's first welcome uh, Brigadier General Felix Kulaije. Welcome to Morning at NTV, the 6th day of October, 2022. Can he? Good can you hear me? You. Brigadier, a very good morning. I don't hear you. I can hear you speak, sir. A very good morning and welcome to Morning at NTV, the sixth day of October. Please, I, I don't know how to answer you when I can't. I don't hear your voice well. Well, that's a bit of. Uh, a problem. Uh, the technical guy is my uh, volume at doing maximum. I thought uh, I would hear you. The technical guy is uh, doing the very best to ensure that uh, we do uh, uh, catch up uh, very uh, promptly with uh, Brigadier General Felix Kulaija, so he can be able to answer to some of our questions uh, this morning. But as that is uh, being rectified, just to bring you up to speed with uh, the discussion, uh, Uganda's uh, military and uh, defense systems have undergone vast changes uh, from administration to others, among well, others, I in the last uh, 60 years. Well. Now, a few days to celebration of a 60th anniversary of independence. We want to ask the questions. Has the military undergone the kind of changes or reforms that are required for us to be truly independent? Away from uh, a provision of uh, defense and securing territorial integrity, there are aspects that are critical for an army and its people. Brigadier General Felix Kleije, a very good morning again. General, good morning. Can you hear me now? All right, sir. Thank you. I can see you. <laughs> yes, uh, we come on the backdrop of uh, what is no doubt important uh, developments in the country. But allow me uh, first and foremost ask what is in store this time around as the nation prepares to celebrate uh, 60 years of independence. The army, what is in store with regard to Sunday 9th of October? Thank you, Chris. What is in store for you? First of all, you have a parade. A uh, parade of course, uh, the, 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 the Uganda police force, Uganda prison service, and the Uganda Wildlife Authority. You have a march first that uh, will be displayed by the Uganda Defense Forces Air Force, the Uganda Defense Forces Air Force. Uh, all as will take place at Koro, the Media Ground. We expect to greet the dignitaries, the VIPs. And uh, the group of the six years is quite very exciting. So we intend to do quite a good show for you going to enjoy. All right, that uh, very much sounds more like the routine events of. Uh, most of uh, the uh, occasions that, of course, the army is involved in, the parade and uh, uh, the pomp and ceremony of uh, national events. Uh, but allow me to ask you the question right now. News in the last 36 hours has brought the military on tenterhooks, so to speak. Uh, reports. Come again? In the last 36 hours, 
uh, developments have seen the mm -hmm. army inevitably embroiled <laughs> in what is no doubt a diplomatic spot where one of the top generals in the military uh, threatened another country with attack. What's your comment on that? First of all, a general cannot threaten another country. Because uh, for those in the know, and if you don't know, maybe it's, it's better to inform ourselves, the authority to declare war lies in the parliament and the president. The president can declare war if the country has been attacked. Parliament can declare war in agreement with the president when their interests pursue outside the country. Not an individual general has the authority to commit the country. So, in my view, uh, if you are referring to the feats of uh, General Kainerudova, those feats do not commit the country. Therefore, they would have been seen as a threat to our neighbors. All right, of course, uh, we do have a little bit of uh, trouble there with the uh, uh, volume and uh, our ability to very clearly uh, catch uh, Gen Brigadier General Felix Kleiji. But of course, they are saying that uh, no single general has the ability to declare war, and that is entirely the role of uh, Parliament. So, Brigadier General, in a case where a general's comments have been seen to do just that or border on aggression, what is the next uh, mode of conduct, especially when it comes to reining in an official or a military officer, for that matter, who says or acts in ways that border on uh, threatening another country? I, like I say, once you know the procedure of... you know that are actually non consequential and this particular case for us in the EPDF, we were not excited nor moved by uh, the individual things and i would also like to ask the journalists to distinguish between uh, an official account and a personal account the, the individual general seated on, on, on his feet and in his name and i have by the way i also have a platform of some people who call themselves mks uh, army so when you say the my, my, my army and me which army do you understand when they are civilians who call themselves mks army so for us who are in the know we are in trial for us and the serious matter but of course it's there for our neighbors, and indeed, Minister of Foreign Affairs did issue a statement. His Excellency the President yesterday did tweet uh, an apology. As far as I'm concerned, I defer to the Catholic uh, uh, priest or principal, Rome Lokuta, Paul Zafinita. Rome has spoken, no more debate. I'm afraid it doesn't work like that in this case because this is a matter of national interest. A serving general, of course, using a platform that is very popular to share opinion on matters to which he has the capacity to act on, being a commander, especially in light of the time that he made that particular or those particular tweets. Now that it's been, uh, there's been an apology that has been sent, uh, rather issued out by the president uh, to the people of Kenya for these particular comments, is there an internal mechanism within the Uganda National, the U U UPDF, Uganda People's Defense Forces, to rein in on an officer who conducts himself in the manner that General, well, to be very specific, Muhozi Kainerugaba uh, conducted himself? Indeed, you have used the right term, internal mechanisms. They are there, they exist, and they are employed in accordance with the law that governs us, 
over the law, over the land. If it were another general officer or even a man of the Uganda People's Defense Forces or woman, because the phrase is common, the men and women of the army, what would be the reaction right now for the military? There are those within the country who are saying that, well, there is no reaction in terms of punitive measures or that we should even expect any because General Mohoz Kainerugaba, the reality is, is son to the president. I wouldn't like to go into speculation, uh, my brother. I'm not a speculator by nature, so I will not go into speculation for now. All right, allow me transition and ask if uh, events like these represent a lack of prompt and swift reforms within the military to be able to distinguish between what an individual is as a person and an officer. Is that work that is failing the uh, top brass within the army to work out? <coughs> For us, we know how to distinguish. It is you, the one inch, who don't know how to distinguish, and yet you want to, to, to show that you understand military matters very well like uh, the, the military officers uh, do. For us, we know how to distinguish. I have, um, maybe I better take this chance to tell you that uh, the UPDF can only be committed by the commander-in-chief, and for in terms of comments or statements, the CDF and the spokesperson are the people who can commit the EPDF in words. That's right. In other words, if I made a statement as the EPDF spokesman, mm. that is a serious statement that nobody can sleep about if it was in that direction. Mm. But a service commander, no. And like you said, you, you, I want to refer to what you said, capable of implementing what you have said. He is not capable because the capability <laughs> is enabled by the legal regime. And I've told you the legal regime allows only the president and the parliament to declare war. An individual general cannot, even the CDF of the entire UPDF, cannot declare war on another country. We come from a history that is very delicate, where the National Army has been seen to uh, traverse territories of other countries without necessarily seeking or getting the approval of uh, Parliament. So it's a bit unnerving, and you should forgive the country for thinking like that. When such incidents happen, Parliament could be sidestepped and, well, Nairobi could be taken in two weeks. I think uh, your, 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 your history is, uh, is not complete. Uh, the history of events. I doubt. The UPDF has traversed other territory on the orders of the commander in chief, who is the president of the public. And I did tell you mm. that the president and the parliament are the ones who can declare war. So if the country is under attack, the president can deploy troops to pursue the enemy and then inform parliament after. So there is no single occasion the Uganda People's Defense Forces or NRA before it ever crossed the border without the orders of the commander in chief. All right, let's uh, leave uh, the semantics of technical orders away and uh, return to the fact that uh, it's a point of reflection, no doubt, the fact that uh, Sunday 9th October will be Independence Day and the role of the military for the last 60 years years we've seen changes happen and the uganda people's defense forces as is now has propped itself as one that is a people's army but many times there is an uneasy relationship between the military and the citizens of this country so much so that human rights abuses continue to be committed by the updf or members of vigilante groups that are affiliated or reported to be affiliated to the military where do we stand on this particular issue when it comes to reining in on elements within the army that could be responsible for this kind of disambiguation of duty? Thank you for the question. The UPDF prides itself in enjoying 
strategic good relations with the people. Because the people are, because we are, and we are because they are. Mm. The army cannot do, cannot exist without the people. And therefore, we do value our relationship with the people. However, we are not made of angels. We are human beings. There are individuals that at times get excited mm. when deployed to do work and they make mistakes, which we are sorry for. However, we always and always punish those who err. You say you always punish those who commit some of these uh, crimes or misdemeanors, so to speak, especially when they are in military fatigues. However, there has been a dismissive attitude towards uh, some of the reports of uh, abductions by the military or operatives, so much so that it's entirely your, uh, it is you to decide what you will inform the country on who has been arrested, why they've been arrested, and it's until either it's captured on video or made public that you actually feel that you should come out and speak about it. Shouldn't you be informing the nation about some of these developments, especially when it affects the livelihoods of some of the people that are involved or are victims of these abductions? First and foremost, uh, there is no need for abduction. The state doesn't have to abduct. The state arrests doesn't abduct. <laughs> and so, like I said, yeah. errors are made, and for us, it is work in progress to continue improving uh, on the character of the individuals that join the EPDF. I need also to use this, seize this opportunity That's right. to appeal to you, the public, the citizens of this country. What kind of people do you give us that are joining these days? Oh, Whereas our time we joined out of conviction to serve the country, to change the situation which was not good, those joining today are job seekers. Oh. And many of them, I dare say, have not been nurtured by parents because parents have abandoned them to housemaids. Those who have them, those who don't have children are only surrendered to TV and the phones. Yes. So there's no character formation at home. General. Are and after blaming? 20 years, 25 years of this individual not being nurtured, you throw him in the army where he's going to get only nine months of training. You expect us to change the character in nine months? Are you and yet we are not about character formation alone. We are teaching you how to survive in the battlefield. We are teaching how to defend the country. So I, for me, am challenging the society. We are both responsible. Give us people of good character, you won't see the, the actions or the acts you see on the street. Are you because are you individuals yeah. that make an institution, an institution has laws, has rules, but these rules and laws operate with individuals or within individuals. So give us people you would be proud to see in uniform. <laughs> wow. Um taken a little bit aback and uh, speechless, General Felix Kleige, uh, the fact that uh, the citizens are being blamed. They have been having for quite of the two to three years when I have studied why we are seeing things in the EPDF that were not seen before. And I realized that it's because of the characters that you are giving us as society. Wow. That's interesting. Society is... We are from you. And therefore, as you indeed correctly criticize our actions, monitor what we do equally, monitor the people that are joining, like next year we're going to recruit officer cadets, give us the best the society has. Interesting. I find myself in a spot of bother. But I would like to ask you, as we enter the final bend of the discussion, your relationship with the police. I do not know whether the police is also grappling with the fact that uh, we've handed them characters that are not worthy of duty and that uh, you either disciplining them or uh, putting them straight. Is that something from the same work? pond? That is the Ugandan society. A society where parents have abandoned their responsibility of nurturing children. 
All right, as uh, Uganda looks to celebrate uh, 60 years on uh, Sunday, what would be the aspects away from uh, the discomfort with the fact that uh, we are flawed in character to be able to serve in the military? What other aspects would you love or like to see uh, worked on to be able to produce best people to put in g government, that is the uh, positions including ministers, uh, permanent secretaries, uh, judicial officers, because these are also served by the Ugandans to you, the state to use. What can we do to improve them? Should they come back for reorientation at home? Uh, at home, at, if somebody is already an adult at home, it's too late. Mm. That's when we have to tighten the rules and therefore tighten equally the punitive measures that uh, are employed after courts. Mm. You realize people have lost, uh, have shown distrust with the legal system because they think they don't get justice again because people are more interested in the money than serving. You've seen um, the quality of uh, people coming out of education institutions Cheating exams has become a common thing. What do those show you? So it's failure in the family, it's failure at church, it's failure in the mosque, it's failure in, in the schools. And therefore, the entire society needs to stay up. We need to go back to our value system. A society that has no values, values a set of values, that acts as a moral compass. We see products like those we are seeing today, corruption, mismanagement of public resources, misbehavior on public in public offices, people go seeking for jobs if they are ladies, people want to give them capital interviews. It's quite sickening if we don't change this. All right, uh, very interesting there, and of course, uh, very valid uh, sentiments there are being raised by the spokesperson of the Ministry of Defense and uh, Veteran Affairs. Very lastly, uh, what are the achievements right now that you can uh, pinpoint as Uganda celebrates uh, 60 years of independence on the part of uh, the military? Well, first and foremost, from the military side, we have held the country together for now 36 years, unlike before. Uh, I can tell you, for example, you are talking of things in the 36 hours when uh, action was taken uh, the other day, uh, the reshuffle, the mini reshuffle in the EPDF. Some people told their family members to leave town. You never know what will happen. Of course, those are things of the past. People expected if there's a, a reshuffle of a general, then there would be instability. It didn't happen because the UPDF is a professional and is able to ensure stability of the country and undeterred. The other achievement, of course, we used to have only one service, the army. Now we have, uh, we are a tri-service. We have uh, a full-fledged air force. We have uh, a full-fledged special forces and the land forces. So we have achieved professionalism in the army, the EPDF. We have achieved the stability of the whole country. And for the first time in 50 years, the army, the, the country is at peace with itself. This is not, this is not mean uh, as an achievement. And we are proud of what we have so far scored as a country. Of course, we have supported the economy. You can see that uh, today we are able to undertake a number of projects as a country, even using internal resources. Okay. All right, before we came on air for this particular interview, we were told you were rushing to Entebbe for a meeting with the president. Is it a crisis meeting in light of uh, what happened in the last uh, 24 or 36 hours? General, did you hear me on that? All right, we seem to have... Uh, uh, General, I was asking, you are rushing to meet the president, and uh, we are inclined to think it's uh, a volley, one of the volley of uh, crisis meetings that are being held in light of events in the last 24 
or 36 hours. Can you clarify on that meeting, please? Well, technology has done a disservice to us and uh, we seem not to be able to uh, get through to Brigadier General Felix Kulaije so we can uh, register that very last uh, question to him uh, for an answer. But what we know is that uh, he's been summoned uh, for a meeting with the president and uh, of course a host of other military officials. What we do not know is the agenda of the meeting but our ears on the ground shall be firm and uh, perhaps uh, later on we shall be speaking to him and others to see exactly what is going on.